Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. You're now tuned into CFRE 91.9 FM and also live on the World Wide Web at CFREradio.com. It is your man, DM Cool. And you're now tuned into Cool Radio. Welcome back, people. Once again, that was Sun Real with LA. Um, now, going from LA to Toronto, my guest for tonight, he is a fashion designer straight out of the beautiful city of Toronto, Ontario. He is about to take his brand by storm. I've seen the designs, I've seen the apparel, it's absolutely amazing. And this guy comes from a long line of successors and he is about to make his name for himself in the city, not just in the city, but worldwide as well. Trust me, DM said it first, he was here first, you already know what it is. I am talking about my man who's looking very extra suave right now with the full man cheese shades on. I see you play, boy. I'm talking about my man who goes by the king of arts. Kane, how's it going? <laughs> everything's good, everything's good. Uh, just to clarify, yes, I had an amazing intro. But thank you for Appreciate that. Appreciate it. Um, I do go by Mr. KOA. Okay. Um, king of arts is the brand. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want... I try to separate separate myself from the brand as much as I can. Okay. Uh, when I first started, um, people were like, "Oh, you're the king of arts." Uh, Mr. Koa is is the nickname I go by. It's my Instagram mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but that is just I, I'm the ambassador behind the brand. But okay. what King of Arts is, um, everyone has their own talent, and mm -hmm. I, I believe whatever it is is your art, whatever mm -hmm. skill, whatever talent you have, whether it's singing, dancing, sports, whatever it is, is mm -hmm. your talent and your art. Mm -hmm. And the whole King of Arts theme and premise is. Uh, basically, I'm trying to encourage people to make the, come to the peak of whatever it is they're good at. Mm -hmm. and, and the way I started this brand was literally from the bottom up, from, from sketching. Mm -hmm. um, if people have been following me for a long time, I, I'm at UTM, so I know a lot of people here. Mm -hmm. um, but they've seen, I started this from sketching as, as, a, as a hobby. And I, I didn't take it too seriously until um, I just you know, put some confidence in myself. And, and it, it, to what it is right now is crazy I could even I can't even explain to you how far it's come but it's my second year now so appreciate you guys having me hey my pleasure and you pretty much just took out my first question so check that <laughs> off the list uh bang on though um so basically you know you, oh, with your premise that you just made king of arts own the art that, that that you're passionate about be the king of it be the queen of it in yes. fact um so on that note fashion designing uh drawing sketches where did that stem from uh, to be honest, how it even started was um, a former university basketball player for the University of Ottawa. Mm -hmm. uh, so I did play for three years. I got recruited there. Um, and the coach that brought me there, he happened to quit. And after he quit, mm -hmm. um, that put me in a spot because I left my city, a beautiful city of Toronto, mm -hmm. to go to, not, not sorry to knock people from Ottawa, but Ottawa is a <laughs> terrible city. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. You can't say that. Oh, man. <laughs> Coming from Toronto to Ottawa is, is night and day, man. Culture shock. Yeah, culture it's, shock. So, when he quit, I was like, what the hell am I doing here, right? Shout out to the Cap City real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, shout out to my Ottawa GGs. They're number one in the country right now. There you go. Uh, they beat Carlton, so I'm proud of those guys. That's what's up. But, um, yeah, so after we left, a new coach came and, you know, a little bit of adjustment and it, we didn't really see eye to eye. Mm -hmm. So, I, as a result of that, uh, we decided to part ways. Mm -hmm. um, and I have all this free time. I don't know if there's any basketball players here, but mm -hmm. if you play any professional sports or for collegiate or university, it's that's all it is. Basketball mm -hmm. school is your life. Mm -hmm. So basketball was gone. And I had all this free time, and I'm like, what do I do? You yeah. know, and, and it was a big, it was a big struggle for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I turned to art, and then art became my new identity. And mm -hmm. I started sketching literally out of boredom, mm -hmm. and I started doing random designs and posting them everywhere. I had a pretty good social networking mm -hmm. network base and. People got, I got a lot of feedback. So I started making my first couple shirts, just wasn't nothing special, and mm -hmm. wearing them around campus and stuff, and it just kept growing from there, to be honest. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's usually how it starts off anyway. It starts off with like a little bit of a sketch plan or just whatever it is. It just starts off with the base, and then people naturally gravitate towards it, and then eventually, you know, you just own your craft up for a while. So Absolutely. clearly that's what you did. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, with fashion, I happen to notice that fashion is all about innovation. You can literally take one thing that's really basically nothing and then make it into something. So why, in your opinion, is fashion one of the only few avenues or art forms, whatever you want to call it, that has that ability to craft something that had little value to it to something that has greater value? Uh, the best way for me to ask that question is people always, when they, girls specifically, when they um, are chilling around me and stuff, they're always like, you don't have a style. Like, mm -hmm. I, I literally will wear anything, whether it's expensive, whether it's cheap, as long as it looks good. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, a lot of people are so caught up with branding and like, 
pricing and the name brands and mm-hmm. what they see on TV or on, on artists and stuff, but clothing is such a, a unique way to, you know, speak, speak mm-hmm. volumes. And, and the, the um, slogan of my company is the clothing you choose to wear is a story you choose to share. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the clothing, that's the clothing slogan I have because everyone has their own story. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't know where I came from, I don't know where you came from, but mm-hmm. the way you carry yourself and the stuff you decide to wear, different cultures, African clothing, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. um, it, it tells stories without you having to say anything. And mm-hmm. I feel that's why clothing has so much power because there's so many different stories, so many different talents, so many different avenues people come from, mm-hmm. and they all share different th- different things or mm-hmm. express different things based on how they're dressed. So that's that's why I think that's why I brought myself into clothing and, and been so hooked to it because so many avenues to it. Absolutely, man. And definitely with clothing as well, too. I mean, you take a look at someone, the way someone is dressed, and like it gives you like a subtle hint of what the personality could be like. Yeah. Someone could be spunky and spontaneous. There's, mis- there's misconceptions as well. There is, there is, yeah. There, there is. Which is why it's just a subtle hint, right? Because right. it's not telling the whole story. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I mean, for all they know, you can see like a stain on someone's shirt and, you know, they yeah. didn't have to tie a pen on yeah. them, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that could be the case like, as well. Yeah, that's a bum. Exactly, exactly, yeah. right? Exactly. It's true. It's all waste you. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, man. So let's keep it going with the fashion. Now, fashion and hip hop go together like Jay Z and Beyonce, synonymous. man. It's synonymous. It's synonymous. In fact, like, I would argue that, you know, hip-hop has five elements rather than just four. Yeah. Fashion being um, the fifth one in a sense. Yeah. So what is it about the synonymity between uh, fashion and hip-hop in your words? Uh, it, the, the fashion and hip-hop, the hip-hop industry has so much power, man. Mm-hmm. And it, negative and pop, positive. Mm-hmm. But um, it's, that's, to be honest, hip-hop and fashion grew up together. You know, the 90s, for that's what I, what I grew up in. Mm-hmm. But um, just every time you think of clothing, you think of music. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it, it literally comes comes hand in hand. Like, mm-hmm. whatever a celebrity's wearing, whatever artists are wearing in the music videos, that becomes the next hit thing. Oh, yeah. And how you, how that becomes a trend is mm-hmm. from the music listened to. Yeah. So, it, whether it's rap, hip-hop, rock, whatever it is, if you can tell based on the genre, people are dressed differently. Oh, yeah. And it, 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 that's why I feel it's hand in hand because... With, like I said, an art, mm-hmm. they are both arts, you know, mm-hmm. the, the art of, of fashion and the art yes. of, of music, mm-hmm. and creating music. And they're both, both things are, I guess, in the industry of creation. Mm-hmm. And I feel that's why they, they go together because the Im- impact these people have through music mm-hmm. is the best way for you to not only listen to what you like, but also envision and see yourself in those kind of things. Exactly. You know, from an artistic side of things, it's like, two strong forms of art coming together, colliding, because at the end of the day, both of them speak about expression, expressing one's you know, innermost feelings, basically, based on the way you present it, uh, right. whether it be spitting a lyric or dressing it in a certain dress of fashion, basically. Right. And then from the corporate side of things, it's like, hey, this we should get this artist to uh, sponsor our brand by, by wearing you know one of our clothes. Exactly. So on any spectrum you look at it, it's, it's a match made in heaven in a sense. Um, now... What have been some of the misconceptions about the fashion industry that you have come across? I, it's a grind, man. It's a grind. And I, I, I'm seeing, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm not, a lot of people call people haters or whatever you want to call yeah. it. I'm not a hater in, in what, any way whatsoever. Yeah. Um, but I don't give respect to people who don't put the work in. And that's just, whether, not even clothing, just in any aspect. Yeah. Yeah. And this takes work oh, yeah, whatever sure. I, I there's nights i don't sleep there's mm-hmm. when i was still in school when i'm done school not when i was still in school like i'd be like assignment or this yeah and and this would win every time yeah, yeah. Um, I, love. <laughs> um but you know there's a lot of clothing lines quote unquote clothing yeah. lines. <laughs> talk talk to people <laughs> talk to them it's a lot of clothing lines popping up around you know the city and and no no um no knock to their hustle but mm-hmm. there, there's a difference between designing clothing and just printing shirts Talk to him. <laughs> talk to him. <'em>. <laughs> Real talk, people. There's, there's a big difference between, like, a lot of people I'm seeing, just, I, I like to observe. I'm mm-hmm. very, very quiet. I'm not, sorry. I'm a very loud person, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm quiet when I can be. Okay. I, like to, I like to observe things. Yeah, you're observing. You're, you're stoic. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, I'm seeing a lot of people just, you know, they get a design and just print, 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 and it's just either it's vinyl, cheap print, cheap shirt, mm-hmm. little basic shirts, and just, I have a clothing line. That. That's not designed, man. Mm-hmm. Like there's there's a technique, there's, yeah. there's thought process, there's collections, there's branding, there's all these different aspects. Not just like I have a shirt, all my boys wear it, and let's push this. Yeah. Like, and the way I started this whole brand was like I didn't want to limit myself. Mm-hmm. Like 
the whole King of Arts thing has nothing to do with the city, has nothing to do with Toronto, has nothing to do with anything local. Because I my mind is is very expanded and yes. very global. Yes. Like I'm, I'm sure you've seen all these six brands coming out, six this, six that. Mm -hmm. That's only local. Like their their vision is so minimal. Yeah. That. I'm sure they're doing well because uh -huh. it's a, it's a hot thing. Yeah, Drake, it's, it's Drake, regional Drake made the six cool. I will never call Toronto the six <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. This guy, oh man, he's going in right now. Damn, I was prepared yeah. for this. <laughs> this is Toronto. Uh huh. Drake, as much as he's a very monumental person for our city, he does certain things. Just honestly, I feel like he just tries to test things and see if it works, and it seems to work every time. But you know what? There are no worse names for for Toronto, yeah. like like Hog Town, like. Who wants to be known as Hogtown? Yeah, that, that didn't really catch though. Like that, that didn't really like. This is catching. But but like, but Hogtown's not more of an urban thing. But it, it's still no, of course caught on, it, right? It, I'm, I'm saying extent. like it, it's like what this is right now. Yeah, like this is hashtags. This is captions. This is clothing lines. Yeah. Like he literally is making this thing. It yeah, and I it's like. People who are making their brands for this stuff, or for the six or Toronto, mm -hmm. or rep putting Toronto or stuff like. It's great. Yeah. They'll make their money quick, mm -hmm. but you can't sell that in Australia. Mm -hmm. Like, what does Toronto mean to a kid in Australia? You know what I mean? Like, the stuff I, the way I'm thinking, I'm like, yeah. I'm thinking Australia, I'm thinking China, I'm thinking Europe. Like, I'm thinking a brand like a shirt like what I'm wearing right now has yeah. nothing to do with Toronto. Yeah. It doesn't say Toronto. However, uh -huh. this shirt is so and so bad. Yeah. It's actually a vintage image from Bloor Street Theater in 1950 mm -hmm. from Toronto. Mm -hmm. So it has a Toronto feel to it. Mm -hmm. No one will know it's from Toronto, but yeah. I do. And that's how I designed it. Okay. So that's my little subtle thing to it. Okay. Two things, two things. One, yeah. I see it like a, I don't know if you meant to do this on purpose, but like I see like a subtle T in, 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 the, in the design of your shirt. So it could signify Toronto as well too. I don't know if you hey, booked that. I didn't book it. Okay. Hey, that's just my mind working. Learn something new. One creative to another. <laughs> um, and secondly, I understand where you're coming from about how it's just local. Right. But then if you look at a brand like the NY symbol, yeah. like the Yankee symbol, yeah. that's worldwide. Those I love New York t-shirts, that's worldwide. Right. And you might and someone may ask you the same thing. What does that mean to a kid in Australia, right? right. So it depends on how much strength it gains over time, I believe. So we never know. Those six shirts, they may be stronger, a stronger entity than what it is right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I can I can tell you right now that I've seen quite a few people in America rock Toronto Blue Jays like fitted and mm -hmm. stuff like that. No, so yeah, I think it, I think uh, the main thing is it just with anything in general, right. you got to give it time and a chance to, to grow and develop before. The, the only thing with the Blue Jays thing, mm -hmm. Blue Jays is a team. Yes, right. So that that that's someone supporting a team. Yeah, rather than. The, the brand of, of branding Toronto or mm -hmm. just saying where it is, six, whatever, that is, is very specific mm -hmm. and there's, I, it's all opinion. Yeah, no, it's cool, it's, it's cool. It's all opinion. Please, yes, I, yes. Honestly, I'm the kind of person that's like, take it or leave it, like, I never say our opinion's wrong or right. Bro, that's why you're here. Like, <laughs> it's all opinion, but yeah. the six or whatever you're branding it mm -hmm. as, it, what is the substance, mm -hmm. right? Like, what is the message? Like, like my message that I'm trying to send to people is to empower themselves, mm -hmm. right? Not em empower the city, but you're empowering whatever, you, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. Not just, you don't have to be from Toronto, right? Like if, if I'm wearing a sick shirt and I'm from, you know, Yugoslavia, mm -hmm. like I just wear it because I like Drake. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but that doesn't, it's not resonating properly. You know what I'm saying? That's, mm -hmm. that's the way I see it. But I mean, shout out to all those brands out there. It's, it's, they're, they're doing what they're doing, but mm -hmm. I have a bigger bigger picture in mind for myself. So, mm -hmm. so I'm kind of, I'm kind of curious. I'm, I'm liking how we're touching this topic right now. So I'm curious on your opinion on this. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you're a basketball fan. Yeah. Right? And you play basketball in, in uh, university. Yeah. Uh, what's your take on the We the North slogan? Oh, man. <laughs> 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 said, hey, hey, I'm ready for this. Please, please. I want to hear this. I want to hear, I'm very curious to hear this. First of all, uh -oh. I'm... I have a, I have a very I'm I'm that guy <laughs> that will correct spelling okay. everywhere. Okay. Like if you make a spelling error, anyone who knows me, you can't get away with anything. Any okay. spelling. So you're a grammar error, police. Basically. I'm a grammar. Pl we are the North. First of all, if you're going to go that direction, not we the North. I don't know why they want to purposely sound grammatically incorrect. I, I, I have a reason for that. Go ahead. Um, back in um, the 1800s, right. uh, when the Confederates were fighting in the South, right. and they were trying to. Uh, claim ownership of the United States of America. Yeah. 
the North and the South that, that had their had slogans that matched that. They said, "We the North or we the people." So I think that's what they were trying to follow. I think their mistake in, in your eyes, I guess, is that they didn't put a comma between <laughs> the we and the North and, and the basically. So I think that's where it stems from. I don't think they they tried to be hit by saying, "Yo, we the North, son." We I don't think they're trying to go that route. All right, all right, fine. Give but anyways, continue though, continue. Okay. <laughs> um, but it's cool to be in, in the positive light. It, this is the biggest, the tightest the city's ever been in yes. terms of sports for our city. In terms of the Raptors are doing, well, right now, I don't know. But we'll talk about that later, <laughs> trust me. We'll talk about I, that I, later. They started strong. They did. Like, they did. Like, you know the first time in bed, you start strong, but it's how you finish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? It's how I sprint to marathon. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, but at the same time, that playoff run we had last year brought the city together. People were outside. Like everything was packed, like the whole We North thing, they they made so much money on that, Mm -hmm. which which is great. Um, But in terms of the branding, like I'm not a fan of it, but I'm a fan of what it's done for the city. Mm -hmm. So I I can I can objectively look at it like it it has really put brought us together, and it's we haven't had anything like this ever. Mm -hmm. So I mean, if it's We the North, We the South, yeah, igloos, whatever it is that got us together, then it works. And and here's my thing on it. uh, Before we get to uh, the next portion of the show. Um, my thing on We The North, yeah. I love the fact that they made that slogan and they basically said what they said within that commercial. Mm-hmm. Basically, it addressed the people who are constantly looking for validation from America. Right. And I find that a lot right. in Toronto. Like, they'll, people will support Kobe yeah. or T-Mac or anything before. Even when Vince Carter was here. Everyone, who was everyone on? Iverson, yeah. right? So, yo, if we had Iverson, no, 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 or we should have kept team, man, no, 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 and all that stupidness. Oh, so, I think this, that, that commercial, it wasn't, a, it wasn't towards Americans, it was towards Canadians. Right. It was to say, take pride and ownership in what you have. Support what you have, especially when they're doing good. That's the message, message that I took from it, and I respect it, because there have been times where the Raptors have done good, but people will still yeah, say... done well. Or done well. See? Oh, well, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. I have a friend that would love you, by the way. But anyways, um, they've done like even when they've done well, yeah. they, they 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 still they'll still look and say, yeah, well, they haven't done this yet, or yeah. Yeah. they could have done that better. So I think for me personally, it was to say, hey, take ownership of what you have, take pride, yeah. and don't look for New York or LA or any of those big markets in America for validation. Keep Validate it, yourself. Keep it here. Keep it here. Own it. Right. That's I, why I, I took it. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And on that note, um, it's time to play some games, man. We got to play some games. 